Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and I'm here to run this short session on five tips about using AI in faculty development. If you want to know more about me, check out the resources in the description below. So let's get started. So we've got a lot of ground to cover here, and these are our main objectives. We're going to get through these, uh, but there's lots of helpful follow-up and resources on that resource document right there. It includes resources to further explore and actually the prompts that I cover here and additional prompts to try out. So it's in the description and that resource is really everything you need to kind of take the next steps after this video. It's also covered with a Creative Commons license, so you're welcome to share it and adapt it. So our first focus is thinking about how we might use this in the context of our work. What are the things we need to bring to how we think about using this tool or set of tools at our respective institutions? Faculty developers are really the uniters and connectors on a campus. They're looking to build connections, enhance teaching and learning, and integrate research and pra praxis into the classroom. And because of the nature of AI tools, they need to really think deeply and broadly about the use of generative AI that extends beyond just how how it is to be used in classrooms. Don't get me wrong, if educational developers do just that, how we use it, thinking about how we use it in the classroom, they are doing a great service. But AI is, bi is a bigger thing they will want to think about and throughout, throughout their work. As Campus Connectors, you want to bring together different members of the campus to think through all the ways this can help and hinder education. Where the essential ways, where the essential ways to use it can manifest and what are the problematic edge cases. Acting as the center for that conversation allows you both to level the best of scholarship of teaching and learning and understand the ways that AI will reverberate in different parts of the student's learning experience. Along those lines, it's not, it's not on your figure, it's not on you to figure it all out. Rather, it should be you bringing together those users and skeptics and everyone in between to share their insights and thoughts. Uh, you can operate as the platform to facilitate the learning around all of this. Building those robust teams and building out support is important and should be balanced out by addressing the challenges that AI represents. Recognizing the concerns and fears about students and assessment while also acknowledging the biases in the data and the outputs of generative AI, as well as the environmental degradation, are among some of those real issues. Still, these tools aren't going away, so helping folks think through and with these tools, discovering the ways it can impact teaching and learning and researching, assessment and collaborations are important to also consider with all of this. At the end of the day, the educational developers, the faculty developers, want to provide that buffet of ideas, support, perspectives, concerns, and opportunities to help faculty feel more settled and competent in how they understand and use these tools. Okay, how are we going to use it or how might we be using it in our work? Of course, if we're going to bring that framework to our campuses, we have to get familiar and comfortable with generative AI. To that end, we have to be playing with it and getting comfortable with it ourselves. So what are some of the ways you may start using it? This is the low-hanging fruit that can get you comfortable. Uh, this might include having generative AI produce date listings or initial communications you plan to send out. It can also be just getting quick visuals without ceaseless searching, as well as creating basic outlines to uh, projects that you want to pursue. As you get settled into using it, there are some things that I think is where it really gets interesting. You can use it to refine and update content that you have or that you're working on. You can also have it aid you in creating content for professional development and training uh, that you're doing with faculty or students. Often educational developers don't have the full technical range to do a lot of multimedia, but many of these AI tools can actually help with this. Finally, the potential ways that folks are starting to really think about and play with these tools includes acting, having it act as a co-pilot in assignment design. And for me, that's a continually helpful thing for me and my faculty. While some faculty won't be sure of this, other faculty will greatly appreciate not starting with a blank slate. 
Furthermore, using it to generate feedback can also be interesting. A colleague, of, a colleague of mine is doing this to provide feedback to faculty about materials they're creating. It's great because it takes that personal element out of it. If staff is giving the feedback, that can be hard to navigate. If it's AI, it's impersonal and changes the experience. And of course, there's potential for using it to make sense of data that educational developers are routinely collecting. So what does it look like to use these tools with others, particularly faculty? Once again, some of the low-hanging fruit uh, is just showing faculty that they can produce things, that they can edit such a uh, things that they can edit, such as course or event descriptions, or yes, even course objectives. My favorite in this area is to show them how to create exam examples they can use. For instance, creating good and bad examples of an assi of assignment submissions. We often struggle to come up with bad examples to guide students to guide students' work, but AI can actually be really helpful in this regard. Guiding faculty in using it to develop assessments, whether it be discussion prompts, papers, or quizzes, along with creating assignment guidelines and answer keys, this can really win over some faculty for that reduction in work. You can also guide them in creating personas with which to think through the teaching practices, as well as generate case studies for their courses. There's also the possibility for improving accessibility, including creating alt text for images and cleaning up transcripts and adjusting a text to a different reader at a different level. Then there's the ways you can get faculty to think up, think big with generative AI, using AI to enhance course alignment, a personal reviewer of the course that helps see the gaps in ways that isn't grounding in the personal exchange between faculty and instructional designer, getting to think about how it might be used with students in the class to better understand the impact of AI on the discipline is definitely a high watermark. And then helping them think about the ways that it can be useful in the research process can certainly open their eyes to the possibilities of these tools. Okay, what are the practices we want to encourage and discourage as we use generative AI? Particularly because we're still early in understanding all the implications of these tools, there's a few things to keep in mind. The first is being honest about uncertainty. Don't create or internalize the assumption that you have to know everything clearly. No one can. It's the honesty about the uncertainty that is the leadership we need. Continue to try different things. In the guide, you'll see lots of different props to try out. Try these out and look to other to see what others are using. Collect as many use cases as you can to help you think through how best to use it. Along those lines, try different tools uh, to learn the contours of AI across different areas. Document your usage, meaning make sure that you keep track of what you're doing with it. This is helpful for your own development as well as for folks you work with uh, that you can want to encourage usage. Of course, you also want to note when you're using it. It doesn't have to be the, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect citation, but cite your work indicate that you're using AI where and when you're using it. And then finally, build out your guidance for faculty interested in using AI. That should be born out of your institutional policy if one exists, or you should develop different frameworks for engaging or learning about generative AI based upon the different dispositions. That is, the responses to generative AI by many faculty fall into a limited number of camps. Create structures for each camp. But what should you not do? Well, don't dismiss this as a tech fad or undervalue it because it's, it's technology and that's not education. Anyone that thinks education isn't deeply embedded in tools and technology actually doesn't have a fundamental understanding of education in the modern times. Also, don't hide that you're using it. Use it and talk about your use. Make it normal. Lots of folks are using it, but we are not really talking about our usage. And I have to say this because I keep seeing folks do this. Do not put any student work or data into generative AI. For that matter, don't put any faculty or staff data or work without permission. Okay, let's actually look at some specific prompts that can help in this work. There, these are the four areas that I find AI to be incredibly useful uh, in ways that contribute to my work and reduces the amount of time that I need to work on things. So we'll look at each of these types. One thing to note here is that I'm going to be briefly showing and talking about each prompt, and what follows is several screens with lots of text. Don't race to read it all, that's not the goal. Rather, I just want you to get a sense of what the AI puts out. All of the prompts and the responses from Generative AI can actually be found in that resource document that is in the description, along with other prompts that you can learn and try out. These next slides are mostly to give you a flavor of what can be done with with generative AI, so you can go and explore that document and the tools on your own. Okay, 
So here's one that many of us grapple with constantly. Getting a list of dates for a given semester or just mapping out a schedule of some sorts. This prop simply asks that the AI to list all of the Tuesdays in a given time frame, as well as any holidays that are included during that time. And as you can see from the results, what might take five to 10 minutes between, you know, toggling between screens is now produced in under 30 seconds, right? So now we have all of those Tuesdays and this took me under 30 seconds. When it comes to brainstorming, AI can identify a range of things that you might not have thought of and therefore extend your thinking about what you might want to do or how you might want to do it. In this prompt, I asked it to help develop a multifaceted grant program aimed at funding faculty with $250 to $5,000 grants for funding projects related to the institutional mission. I then gave it priorities to consider around how to structure that plan. Here's the thing. This looks like a complicated prompt, but do you know how I got this prompt? I actually asked the AI first to improve my original prompt and maximize the prompt for the benefit of large language models. That is, I got AI to improve the prompt, and then I used that improved prompt to produce this. So you don't have to worry about, wow, that looks like it takes a lot of time to do, that you can actually use AI to help you ask better questions of AI. This, what we have here, isn't even the full answer. Uh, you can find that full answer in the resource document, but it provides quite a lot already if you haven't actually started a program like this. And that's what's great, is you can ask for further elaboration for each section as, as follow-up questions. This iterative approach, this idea that you can give it information, give it a prompt, it gives you new information, and you can actually continue to ask questions, is one of the most powerful things people can get out of this tool. It's that conversation, not just the one shot. So now say that I want to create a plan for professional development for part-time faculty to enhance their asynchronous teaching and learning. Here I ask the AI to provide a first draft of a plan that would focus on portfolio development for part-time faculty. This prompt asks the AI to produce the first draft of such a plan with some particulars I would want in place. And again, this is a partial representation of the fuller output, but it has already given me plenty to work with and to start adapting and adjusting. The result is that I'm not starting at ground zero, but further along. Additionally, if I had a plan from a previous project that I wanted to use the same structure, I can always provide that plan as part of the context and say, adapt the structure of that plan and develop a new plan that focuses on this new subject. Finally, there is using it in for analysis. In this case, I had the AI review a particular Center for Teaching and Learning website and compare it to others for best practices and what should be present on that site and to rate the importance of what should be on that site right so i had it actually do the analysis of center for teaching and learning web pages to figure out like how do we update how do we revamp ours again this is the short version but i can show you the full results are eye-opening and they now give me an opportunity to figure out how to do that that ai uh, sorry to do that website better and this is, again, one of those really powerful things because I can delve deeper further into each of these. I can use it to help me actually think through. I could ask the next question of, okay, what should the outline be? What should the, the page look like? All right, a final bonus tip, which I actually already talked a little bit about, but that is the first question to ask any generative AI should always be asking it to improve the actual question. So I usually start with improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model, and then I insert the prompt. The new prompt that the AI provides is the prompt that I use, and I always get better results when I do this. So those are five tips from this session. We've covered a lot and it's really just the tip of the iceberg. So definitely dive into that resource document and actually start to play with it, build upon it and share with others. Thank you all so much.